Today, Olight just announced their brand new Baton 3 Pro, and we're gonna take a quick look at it to help decide if it's right for you. And as I show you the unboxing, just a quick ethics statement that Olight sent me this unit for review. But like all my reviews, they'll be hearing my thoughts, both positive and negative, at the same time as you. I'm gonna be giving it away to one of you in a week or two, so make sure that you are subscribed with the bell turned on so you'll be notified the moment that giveaway and entry rules are announced. But going back to our first look, physical dimensions are a hair shy of 4 inches in length, 0.9 inches in core diameter and at its absolute widest point, measuring from the button to the clip, is 1.14 inches. In terms of weight, with the battery loaded, we're at 103 grams or 3.6 ounces. I love the way this torch both looks and sits in hand, really straddling that line between an easily pocketable EDC light and potential work light that doesn't feel too small for extended use. If you've been with me for a bit, you know that I use flashlights from many different brands, with a ton of experience using torches daily for work. And one thing I personally like about Olight is their user interface design. What I mean is this thing has one button, and the controls that are written for it needs to enable us, the individual users, to be able to cycle between five brightness settings, two illumination types, and engage the lock so it doesn't accidentally turn on in pocket or in bag. And controlling all of those variables with a single button is pleasantly simple and easy to remember. So let's look at the UI and at the same time discover the output and battery life of this Baton 3 Pro. The lowest brightness level is, like most multi-output level torches, their moonlight mode at just half a lumen. It's initiated by pressing and holding the button for one to two seconds until the light turns on and releasing the button once it does. And of course, to turn the torch off, a quick press of the button will kill the light. Once the light is on at any brightness level, you can cycle through all the levels by pressing and holding the button until the output changes. Keep it pressed and held, and it'll cycle through every brightness until I release the button to stay put. Cycling through again, on low, we're at 15 lumens and 100 candela. By the way, I am making the assumption that if you clicked on this video, you're familiar with torch metrics like lumens, lux, candela, and what they all mean. But if you want a short but comprehensive deep dive, please let me know in the comments if a future video should explore all of those. But cycling up to medium, we've got an output of 120 lumens and 650 candela, which on paper will throw visible illumination to 50 meters or 165 feet. Once we cycle up to high, we get to 600 lumens and 3200 candela. There's also a turbo mode, which isn't cycled through with the standard press and hold, but rather requires two quick presses at any setting, which shoots 1500 lumens at 7900 candela. But this sustains for just two minutes before dropping down to the high mode, not because those two minutes completely drain the battery, but rather for thermals and to protect from overheating. Strobe, by the way, is initiated with a triple press, and all of these button press routines are why I say that I appreciate Olight's user interface. They take like 20-30 seconds to learn, but most importantly, are easily remembered. I mean, strobe is literally a light flashing on and off, so the initiation is to mimic turning it on and off rapidly three or more times. So to demonstrate real-life results, I rigged the Olight Baton 3 Pro onto the top of my camera and went to a soccer field that was near pitch black and set up the tripod inside one of the goals. Moonlight at half a lumen didn't do anything, but with my hand a foot away, you can see that at night, even half a lumen is great for close distances. Low was able to illuminate the goal crease nearest me, and medium clearly illuminating past the half field line. Shooting up to high and zooming in, we can finally see the other goal over 400 feet away, and shooting up to turbo, the other goal is very clear. Since strobe is at the same brightness, it's exactly what you'd expect. But for common EDC uses like say picking up after your dog on a late night walk, even low is plenty while medium and up might already be too bright and overkill. And now for my criticisms. The first one I believe is an objective criticism, meaning it really applies to everyone. And it's with the charging. This external magnetic charging disc is nice because you don't have to fiddle with a charging port flap while allowing this torch to maintain an IPX8 waterproof rating. But this proprietary magnetic charging interface means that if you lose the cable, forget it when you pack for travel, you have to go back and buy a replacement cable. Whereas a flashlight with say USB type C charging means worst case, if you don't have other USB-C cables, you can easily find them at a convenience store or gas station or Amazon. The remaining criticism is subjective because definitely applies to me, but it may not affect you at all. And ultimately it has to do with the size versus function. See my current everyday carry torch is this Nightcore T4K and I love the compact size. 
For anything larger, like my current favorite torch I use for work, the Olight Warrior Mini 2, if the size isn't one that's an obvious keychain light, I'd need it to also have a tail switch. My Olight Warrior Mini 2 stays at and gets used daily at the workshop, and it's shocking how often I use the tail switch for an overhand or hammer grip. And for this Baton 3 Pro's overall size, I personally would need a tail switch to justify the length. At the end of the day though, it's all about what you use your flashlight for. I mean, aesthetically, it's a beautiful light. I love the deep black with this royal blue clip, and I think it looks awesome together to me. And the increments of output will satisfy anyone's EDC requirements. I mean, not necessarily work requirements, say, if you work in search and rescue, but for EDC, absolutely. That subjective in the middle sizing just makes it one that won't fit in either my daily nor my work torch rotations. But hey, that's just me and my use cases. This torch might be ideal for you. And because of that, like I said, in a week or two, I'll be announcing the giveaway for this light. But if for any reason you already know this torch is right for you, or if you're watching this video after the giveaway has already happened, Olight's been kind enough to let me offer a 10% discount site-wide on regular priced items using discount code MAURYSMOOVES at checkout. But also, when it comes to the everyday carry community, a flashlight is common and expected, but if you are curious as to some things that might surprise and actually benefit you, you'll definitely want to watch this video right over here. I'm going to leave it on screen for a few seconds so you have time to click or tap it. But while you're doing that, I do giveaways at least once a month. So be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you'll be notified the moment new videos just like this one drop.